All right. Should you buy the brand new Toyota Tundra with all the gadgets, all the gizmos, or this ancient V8 Toyota Tundra? Let's talk about it. I got rid of my 2021 Toyota Tacoma and I knew I wanted a full-size pickup truck. Now, I'm loyal to Toyota, so I only had one option, but I kind of had two. The brand new Toyota Tundra just came out. You could still get a fairly new Toyota Tundra with a couple miles on it and get that V8. I know there's a lot of people that are currently in the market. Should they buy the new one? Should they buy the old one? These are the five things that helped me, well, spoiler alert, go with this Toyota Tundra. Let's start off by addressing the elephant in the room. Now, I see a lot of people debating, should they get the new one? Should they get the old one? All over Facebook, Instagram, wherever they debate about it. And the first thing that I see people bring up is reliability. If there is any brand that I trust on a first model year, it would be Toyota. And don't get me wrong, I believe that the new engine is reliable, but it's not as reliable as this V8. And having the option to buy a used one with not too many miles over a new one with zero miles, but the possibility of it not being as reliable, well, we see what happened. And that may just be me stuck in old times and not wanting to keep up with the Joneses, but I believe that this V8 is more reliable. I think that's where most people stand, but here's a different way to look at it because if you really do want that next generation Tundra, but you're not sure it's going to be reliable, it is. It's going to be reliable for the length that most people own their vehicles for. Three to four years now is the standard. Like you get a truck, use it for three to four years, and then you get rid of it. So if I was going to keep this truck only for three to four years, undoubtedly I would have gone with the new one. But since I plan on keeping this truck for as long as I can, I didn't want to go down that route since the new truck has been out. There's been a ton of recalls, service bulletins, dealing with that over and over and over again, kind of gets repetitive, annoying, and just something I don't want to deal with. So I plan on buying the new Tundra, just not yet. And when I do, I'd have it side by side with this one. So in the future, we can fully test out the reliability since this is the second to last model year, maybe the second to last model year, I'll buy that new Toyota Tundra. And then we'll test them out and see who really is the best. Before I get into the next point, that's actually a really good point. I didn't even think about that. We're comparing a brand new engine to an engine that's been out since 2007. So just keep that in mind. They gotta work out the kinks. So the second reason I went with the second generation Toyota Tundra is because of the amount of space that you get in the cab. On paper, the new generation versus this generation, it's only a few inches, but in reality, it feels like it's a lot more than that. Another content creator just put out a really good video comparing this model versus the new model. Toyota says it's only a few inches, but I think it's just due to the way they lay out the new one that it feels like a lot more than that. For example, this Toyota Tundra, when you're in the driver's seat, it feels like maybe you're at home, you're in a living room on a recliner, you feel comfy. But in the new Toyota Tundra, it feels like you're the commander of the road. It feels like you're in a spaceship, like you're going down the road and you are the king. So it depends on you, which one would you rather? I think the new one is more so for a younger audience. For me, the screen inside of this one is more than enough. I think it's the perfect size for a truck. The new one, on the other hand, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's either 55 inches or 65 inches. It's a bit excessive in my opinion. Some people hate it, some people love it. Maybe I'm just being an old man about this, but I think it's a bit much. Moving away from the screens though, even right beside you, on the left side and on the right side, there's more going on in the new Toyota Tundra versus the old one. In my truck, you get a few cup holders and the shift knob. On the left side, you get nothing. But in the new truck, on the left-hand side, you have somewhere where you can rest your arm, which is, I think, pretty sweet. And on the right side, depending on what trim you get, you get a lot more dials, a lot more knobs, a lot more control that, well, I guess if you want all the gadgets and gizmos, that's great. But the main problem comes in the back seat. Me personally, I fell in love with this truck and the amount of space that it had. Seeing how many activities I could do in the back seat, but no, actually, the amount of people that you can stuff back there, the amount of gear that you could put in the back just seemed so cool. And I really wanted my Tundra to have all that space in the back seat and seeing that the new one doesn't have as much space kind of sealed the deal for me. I want to have the most amount of space I can get out of a Tundra Although the new one has a little bit more usable storage, you can pop the seat up and you get a nice little cubby where you can throw some stuff in, which is nice. In this one, it doesn't have it. In that video that I mentioned, you can see the creator sit down and you can see how much space he has. I'll link it down below. They say it's a few inches, but it's definitely noticeable. So for me, it was enough to want this one over the new one. Yeah. Now, number three, the third reason why I went with this Toyota Tundra versus the new one is simply the V8. And I think this was my biggest factor for getting this one over the new one. 
but let me talk about it. Before I bought this truck, I told my girlfriend, look, I don't want to be that couple that can't keep up with the times, okay? We have to keep progressing and understanding that the future is coming. What I mean by that is there's some people that don't know how to use YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, stuff like that. I didn't want to be that person with this twin turbo. I didn't want to not give it a shot just because it's not what I knew. With that being said, it's a process, okay? I'm learning how to adjust and understand and trust. Yeah, the V8. I don't know, how can you not want that V8? I understand that the new engine is more powerful and possibly more fuel efficient, but it's not this V8. If I was looking for an absolute powerhouse, then yes, I would just get the iForce Max and call it a day. 389 horsepower, 401 foot-pound of torque, for me, it's enough. Secondly, I love the way that it sounds. Do me a favor. Go and watch a startup video of the brand new Toyota Tundra and a Prius. Put them in two separate tabs, close your eyes, hit play. You won't know which one turned on. Turn this bad boy on and it roars. But then again, that is just my opinion. I like the sound of the V8. I think it's cool. When I think of a truck, I don't think of a V6 or a twin turbo V6. I know that they're more powerful. I get it. But sounds not as cool. If you like turbos, then I guess. But if you like the nice V8, well then you only got one option. Also, in the future, I plan on doing my own work to this truck. So if I own a twin turbo with a hybrid, that's going to be a little bit harder to work on versus a V8 that's naturally aspirated. Number four is the amount of features that you get out of this truck. A while back, I heard something along the lines of the things that we buy, the things that we use, and them being tools. When you think of this truck as a tool, the things you want and need kind of change. And with that mindset, I looked at both trucks, the new generation and the old generation, which would be a better tool for me. That tool being something I could use to camp, overland, carry all my camera gear, and then if I needed to, carry some family in the back. With that being said, I didn't need all the features. I didn't need that super big moonroof. I didn't need a heated steering wheel. I didn't need my seats to vibrate, although I don't think that's an actual feature. I'm exaggerating at this point, but I didn't need all of that $20,000 more of gear. This truck is a 2020 1794 edition. It is the fully loaded version of this model year. With that being said, it has more than enough features for me. Now there's a second part to this. If you want the truck to be a treat, then for sure buy the new one. Undoubtedly, this one is outdated. There's not a lot of gear inside of it. And well, it lacks a lot of common stuff. Even if you buy an SR5 and change up some stuff in it, you can already have more features than you get out of my truck. But for me, like I said, it was more so a tool. I didn't need all the gadgets. I didn't need all the gizmos. So for me, it's plenty. The build quality of everything, to me, it just seems like this one is an absolute tank and that new one isn't. Seeing the new Tundra, there's a lot more plastic everywhere. This one doesn't have much plastic. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall. This is not plastic. This is not plastic. This is not plastic. This is not plastic. This is plastic. This, I can't tell if it is nice plastic. This is plastic though. Something just fell back there. What I'm saying is the new one has a lot more plastic and it just doesn't feel as stout as this one does. Number five is the idea of the Toyota Tundra. I don't know about you, but me. In 2012, I was 12 years old. And when you turn on the television and you see a pickup truck pulling a space shuttle, I mean, what is cooler to a 12 year old? Trucks in outer space. And what do you get when you combine the two? The Toyota Tundra. It was a no-brainer. Ever since then, I knew that the Toyota Tundra, or the idea of the Tundra, was something that I wanted. The biggest, the baddest truck on the road, even though it's not the biggest or the baddest on the road. The idea of it, though, worked. If you were 30, 20 at the time, then you understood that that was just marketing. And, well, it worked. On my young brain, it worked. Not only that, this engine had been in the truck since, I believe, like 2007 or 2008, meaning since I was 7 or 8 until I was 21 or 22, this engine has been being built tested, used, and abused for all that time. The idea of this Tundra just being able to run and gun all day long is undoubtedly one of my favorite things about this Tundra. There's only a few trucks on the market that to this day have, I guess, a stereotype. And I'm not talking about the owners, I'm talking about the vehicles themselves. When you think of a Raptor, me personally, as big as a fanboy I am of the Tundra, it's the king of the road. Well, it was until the TRX came out. To me now, that's the king of the road. Supercharged V8, big tires, nice suspension, massive on the outside. It is an absolute unit. You see that and you think, okay, it's a beast. F-150, you see that coming down the road and well, you pray for them. But the Tundra, you see it and you just, you kind of overlook how reliable it is. You just 
forget about it. Like, yeah, that's a Tundra. It probably has like 200, 300,000 miles on it. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a truck that could run and run and run and run. You're probably watching this video with a Tundra with like 200,000 miles or 300,000 miles. And I hope to be there one day. This 5.7 has earned the name of the Tundra. That new one, I don't think it isn't going to get there, but it just hasn't yet. I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the video. This is the second to last model year. So it's unfair to compare it to the brand new Toyota Tundra. I definitely see Toyota getting it to be reliable or more reliable than it is now. I don't know if they can ever get it to be as reliable as this one. Even if they slap big turbos and a bunch of cooling on there, I mean, maybe, but even on work trucks, like actual diesel trucks, the turbos go out. It's just something that happens because, well, it's being used to work. But if someone like me buys one and just barely drives it hard, maybe it'll last. I don't know. It's really up for debate. Those are five reasons why I went with this Toyota Tundra and not the new one. Let me know down below. Did you buy the new one? Are you happy with it? Or did you buy the second gen? Are you happy with it? Any buyer's remorse? I'm interested. Leave a like, a comment, a subscription. I'll catch you in the next one.